Hello and welcome to Conscious TV. My name is Eleanor Gilbert and today my guest is Jeff Foster. Hi yeah. Jeff. Many of you will have already met Jeff at Conscious TV because he was one of the very first people that we've introduced um, on Advaitism as a matter of fact, on non-duality. And I know that you've moved, you have developed something greater than, you know, but whatever. <laughs> we'll be exploring it um, as we go along today. Now also, Jeff, the very first interview that we did on Conscious TV um, was turned into a transcript and is featured in Conversations on Unduality. Again, some of you will have already seen it featured on, uh, uh, on our website. And um, just a few minutes ago, we finished a con a, uh, an interview with Jeff and Renate based upon Jeff's latest book, which is The Deepest Acceptance, Radical Awakening in Ordinary Life. And it's a lovely, lovely, lovely book. And there is also um, a CD that goes with the book, um, or independent of the book, as a matter of fact. I mean, I actually do like uh, reading, I mean, listening to, to, um, to CDs as I drive, because the radio is always so boring and full of commercials, you know, that that's a godsend as far as I'm concerned. Um, so the interview with Renata, the previous interview with Renata, was based on this latest book and uh, the interview today will be based actually on relationships, which is one of these topics that has always been very present in my life and in many, many, many people that um, I know. It's, it's almost as if, you know, you can't live with, you know, relationship, you can't live without relationship and some people say, I don't want relationship altogether. So, um, so that's what we're going to be exploring today uh, with Jeff. And uh, I would like to start with something that you just, it's actually a great series of questions right at the beginning of the chapter uh, on relationships. In fact, the book is probably a third uh, mm. dedicated to relationships. So you write, are relationships important or even relevant when it comes to waking up from the dream of separation? If there is no separate self, if I'm simply the wide open space in which life happens, are relationships as we know them even possible? Can open space be in relationship with open space? Well, I thought that's a really great series of questions. So, can we? Well, <clears throat> I don't have an answer. I mean, I, I don't think anyone has the answer to relationships. You know, it's uh, no one has worked it out. No one's really, no one's ever come to a conclusion about what relationships are and, and what they're supposed to look like. Um, I think relationship is a, for me, it's a, it's a ongoing uh, exploration of discovery. It's, it's always like life. You know, relationships are always changing, they're moving, uh, different feelings come up, different thoughts come up, and it's, um, I think, uh, as I was saying in the book, um, I mean, I talk about seeking a lot. Uh, I, I say uh, everyone's seeking, everyone in the world is seeking, everyone's looking for something. You know, that's how it seems to be, you know, everyone seems to be looking for something. We're looking for success, we're looking for fame, we're looking for power, we're looking for enlightenment. Um, there's this sense that um, you know something in us is, is incomplete, and uh, one day through through searching and searching and searching, you know, one day we'll find what we're looking for, and then we'll be complete. So we 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 do this with you know with money, we, you know, with success, with fame. One day I'll be famous. One day I'll be rich. One day I'll be powerful. Or, and we do it with this, the spiritual stuff, you know. One day I'll be enlightened, and then. I'll be complete. But for, I mean, for a lot of people, though, the, the way um, seeking plays itself out is in, is in relationships. Mm. You know? I'm, I'm incomplete, but you, <laughs> you will complete me. You, you will um, take away my unhappiness. Yeah. No, you, you will make me happy. And, that, and it's a beautiful dream. It's an absolutely beautiful dream. And as I say in the book, you know, I, I don't want to judge. This isn't about judging anyone. This, this is about looking. This is about looking deeply into our experience and really beginning to ask these questions. You know, and well, at the root of all these questions is well, well, who am I actually? What does it mean to be a self? You know, um, uh, we say, I love you. I'm in a relationship with you. Um, what is this me that is in a relationship with you? And 
And what, what is relationship about? Is, is, it about um, is it really about completing myself? Is, is it really about um, finding someone who will make me happy? Finding someone who will complete me? Finding someone who will make everything okay? You know, finding someone who will take away my pain, take away my fears, take away my sadness, take, basically, you know, you know, looking for someone who will be my, my spiritual guru. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. I mean, we, we do this with our partners, but we also do it with spiritual gurus, you know, with, and as I say in the book, we also do it with cigarettes and alcohol, and I mean, we'll, we will use anything, what's like, what will, what will complete me, but for so many people, and this was, this was so true in my life, I was always looking um, to my partner for, for um, completion, you know, you must love me, you must provide me with love, you know, and then of course there was always the fear of losing love, I have love, I have you, I have love, now I fear losing you and I'm going to do everything I can to try and keep you with me. So um, that's why so many relationships seem to be, I mean there seems to be so much you know, uh, conflict in relationships and drama and um, this is what so many people that I meet are, are struggling with is, you know, is um, conflict, relationship conflict yes. and, and um, you know, however much you love someone you find yourself sometimes in conflict with them and, and, and you know, and the question is how, how can we really meet? How can we, how can we find each other? Where, where, where are you? And, and, and is it your job to complete me? This, I mean, th these are the questions that I came to yes. several years ago. Um, actually, what, what am I really looking for in relationships? And, and, and does anyone actually have the power to complete me? Can, can my partner, not just my partner, but my mother, my father, sister, brother, friend, sp spiritual guru. Does any, does any other human being have the power to give me what I truly long for? Can you define truly what it means to be complete? Because I think when we're looking at relationships, we want different things. Yeah. So, you know, the completion that you talk about quite extensively actually in your book, can you explain a little bit more about what is actually that you mean for, by that? Is it a completion as in terms of um, really knowing who I am? Mm. Or is it a completion of, I don't know, I want a family, I want children, or I want, you know, the position, or I want the money, or mm. I want whatever it is that I, or I want to be happy, or I want a traveling companion, you know, yeah. uh, or a carer. Yeah. You know, so can you just ex explain a little bit more what well, you really question. mean by that? Yeah, I think, um, as I was saying in, in my, my other interview, um, everyone lives with this basic sense of um, lack. And I think it, it begins when we're very young, I think, this basic sense that I lack something, something is missing something is missing from my life and I'm, I'm not quite sure what it is but I know that something's missing there's a kind of a like an empty feeling a sense that a sense of lack a sense something isn't quite complete and it's, it's very difficult to talk about actually because mm. it's um, this this sense that something's missing you know um, but I think everyone experiences that on some level I think that's that's actually built into the experience of being a um, individual of, of actually that that's actually the um, it's the sense of being a separate self, someone separate from life. I mean, often I, I use the metaphor of the, of the ocean and the waves. It's like, um, like if, if you imagine a wave in, the, in this vast ocean and the wave um, forgets, you know, the wave forgets who it really is. The wave forgets that actually it is the ocean. It's an expression of the ocean. It's made of the ocean. It's, its substance is the ocean. So, but, but it although that's true, it, it forgets that and it starts seeking the ocean in, in, in a million different ways, you know, so they always go together, the, 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 the illusion, I would say, the illusion of separation, the illusion that we are separate from the ocean and the sense that something's missing, they, I think mm -hmm. they're, they're exactly the same thing, the illusion of separation, feeling separate from life is feeling that something is missing. And again, it's very hard to talk about, it's very, it's very primal it's very primal, but it, it in the beginning it's it's not um, it's not the lack of something specific. You know, it's 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 a sense of lack. It's a basic sense of lack. It's kind of undefined. You know, then as as, as we grow up, we we in a million different ways we're trying to fill that sense of lack. 
you know, what will complete me, what, basically what will take away this sense of lack. Mm. It's like we go to war actually with this sense of not being complete, this, this sense of lack. What will fill the lack? And we use money and we use sex and we use fame and we use drugs and we use... Possessions. What, possessions, yeah. Money, status. possessions, status, absolutely. Friends. Yeah. What will take away this sense of lack? You know, oh, and then maybe we get into spiritual teachings and we, and we use spirituality. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe more, more, ex more enlightenment experience, experiences, more, more, um, more bliss, more, more, more love, more joy, you know. And it never really seems to satisfy. This, this is the thing, you know, it, it's no matter how much money we make, how much success we have, how many experiences we have, however blissful they are. I mean, even the most blissful experience comes and goes. Um, and this is what all the, the, you know, the, the ancient spiritual teachings have always been pointing to, is just the, the impermanence of experience and everything comes and goes. It's, um, but we still live with this hope that one day we're going to find this, this one thing, this thing, this substance, this person, that will permanently take away this sense of lack, this sense of not enough, not enough. Something is missing. Something's missing. That's what it yeah. all comes back to. So, yeah. um, so for every, as I was saying in the book, you know, for everyone, it, it begins with this basic sense of lack. And then, depending on our, our upbringing, our, our conditioning, our experiences, it, it, it's we, we we focus on something. What what will take away the lack for me? So one person focuses on money. One person focuses on cigarettes. Someone else on enlightenment. But it's all it's all basically the same seeking. It's the same seeking expressing itself in many different ways. Um, so it looks like we want all these things. We want money, we want success, we want fame. Actually what we long for on the deepest level is um, home. Home is mm. a lovely word. You know, we, we, we long for home. We don't really want the money and the power and the success and the fame. We want to come home. And we don't quite know how. To. how. Yes. <laughs> how? That's really the basic question of the the mind of the the seeker is um, how how do I get home? What can bring me home? What object, experience, substance, person? Who who or what will bring me home? And and so what I'm suggesting in the book actually is you're never gonna find home. You know it's. Um, not outside of yourself. Not outside of yourself, exactly. Yes. Or, uh, and love is another word as well we could, yes. we could use if we're talking about relationships. Um, what we're really looking for is unconditional love, yes. you know. Um, and we're not ever, ever going to find it, you're right, outside of our present experience. So somehow life disappoints us, you know, mm. experiences, states, possessions. Partners, partners, husbands, girlfriends, us. wives disappoint yeah, us. Yeah, and, and this isn't necessarily a negative thing. We, we start to see that in a way they're, they're supposed to disappoint us to an extent because they cannot provide what we truly long for. I mean, look at the massive demands that we place on our loved ones, on our partners, on our parents. You, know, you, you, you need to complete me. Mm. And then when they don't, that's where the violence begins, you know. You you were supposed to love me. You were supposed to provide me with unconditional love. See, not only that, but we also not not don't necessarily express that. So there is a, an underlying expectation that if you love me, you will know what yeah. it is that I need. So some of us don't even communicate that. No, it's true. Let alone even you know getting it. It's but, true. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So the disappointment is is even bigger. Mm-hmm. It's true, and, and then we, you know, maybe one relationship falls apart, so we move on to the next relationship. Maybe she, she didn't do it, he didn't do it, but maybe the next one, and the next one. But what are we really looking for? But it's the same thing we do with spiritual gurus. Mm. I've seen people who call themselves spiritual seekers. You know, we're all spiritual seekers. It's, it's all really a spiritual search, even if you're not interested in enlightenment. It's the same basic search, you know. Yeah, it's the search for home, as you the said. The search for yeah. home. So the, the businessman or woman, you know, working uh, 15 hours a day in a, in a city job that, that they don't even enjoy just because they want to they're trying to work their way to towards this perfect retirement when they're when they're in their 80s or whatever and the the guy who climbs a mountain in India and, and lives on an ashram and gives up all worldly 
um, you know, everything, searching for enlightenment. It's, it's the same, it's actually the same person, in, in a sense. They look very, very different. The seeking takes so many different forms. I mean, that, that's what I talk about in my book, all the different forms seeking takes. Yes. But it, you start to realize it's the same basic seeking. It's this longing for home. And it's, it's really astonishing, the, the creativity of it. But, um, so yeah, this is, this is what we, this is the burden of expectation that we place mm -hmm. on, our, on our partners. I mean, let's talk about partners, because that's where, I mean, so many people that I meet are struggling with, with, with relationships. You yes. know, however, <laughs> and however enlightened you think you are, and however awakened you think you are, um, you know, relationships uh, can be a real challenge, you know, and, and, and I, sorry, go on. No, no, what, I mean, you, you can't kind of hit the nail over the head as far as I'm concerned because, you know, no matter how conscious one is, mm. then you always encounter the other that somehow doesn't appear to be as conscious as you are. Yeah. <laughs> Or, uh, you know, that's the projection, or there is the expectation that you should be conscious, you know, after yeah. all these years, you know, after, after all, all these, these talking, you know, you know, come back to me. Um, yeah. So that's another disappointment. Um, and one of the things that I found very helpful, actually, in, in your book is that in my search for the, the um, conscious relationship, okay, yeah. What I was missing was, um, and, and one of my uh, kind of um, pointer to, okay, this is a conscious relationship, into mm -hmm. quotes, is if I can really be in contact with you. So here I'm poking and I'm kind of, you know, trying to get you. That's the trying again, you know, the seeking, the trying. Okay, so under the name of consciousness, let's talk about things. Let's talk about what doesn't work. Mm. Okay, and never feeling that I was met. But what I realized by reading your book is that I was not meeting myself first. Mm. So, so and, and I thought that was a very, very important point, that the intimacy that we all seek, mm. somehow, what about being intimate with yourself? <laughs> with What about being intimate with whatever is arising now? Yeah. Rather than trying to be intimate with you, yeah. because you are in a relationship with me, that was missing, missing. big time. Mm -hmm. So I, I found that really, truly, very uh, well helpful. Mm. That you know about intimacy and what's missing in in relationships. It's so true. We you know we're we're looking for it outside of our, our own experience. You know, um, and I, I realize now for myself that that was the we talk about looking for intimacy, mm. trying to find intimacy, trying to find unconditional. And do love. we even know what intimacy do we even is? Know what because it we is. also have an image about you know. We for do. me, intimacy was okay. Let's talk. We are intimate. Yeah. But that's not it. No. Love, love is. Uh, one of those words, I mean, it's, people use it in so many different ways. So actually, it might be helpful before we go any further to just, um, to define, well, for me to define what, what I mean when I use the word yes. love, because that, that's a big word. I mean, it's like the word God yes. or enlightenment. It's, people use it in so many ways these days. Oh, I think they always have. You know, we talk about loving our country, loving our football team. You know, people talked about loving their, their, their leader, you know, loving Adolf Hitler, people talked about. Is that love? What's... You know, or people talk about loving and losing love, and and is something is love really is love something you can lose? I mean, that's an interesting question. I always I always used to think that love was something that I, I had it or I didn't. That's what mm. I used to think. Love was like a, kind of some kind of possession. It was something that I owned. It was something that I could lose. Um, uh, so. I mean, the, these days when I use the word love, I use it in a very specific way. Um, for me, the word love, um, love is not a, an experience, a, uh, a feeling. You know, I, I used to think, again, I used to think love was a feeling. I used to think, I used, I used to associate love with a nice, warm, happy feeling. Whenever there was a nice, warm, happy feeling here, ah, I think, ah, this is love and I'm loved. I love and I'm loved. But then, when that feeling disappeared, you see, then I, I thought, oh no, I've, I've lost love, or mm. they've, or sh she has taken away. I had love, love was here, and that because of what she did, because of what she said, or because of what she lacks, or he, love has gone. I want love, I want this feeling back. So I was always searching for a feeling. I was searching for a feeling, I was searching for experience, I was searching for a state. 
So the problem with the <laughs> thoughts, states, experiences is that they come and go. They mm -hmm. do. They do. Even the most lovely, warm, happy feeling. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's a part of life. But it, ten it comes and goes. You're always going to be searching for it. You're always going to be um, trying to hold on to it and, and trying to get it back. And you're going to be fighting other people for it if you associate love with something that comes and goes. So at some point in my life, I just became interested in that which doesn't come and go. That which doesn't come and go. That which is, is not conditional. You know, these feel it, a nice, warm, happy feeling seems to be conditional. It's conditional upon usually me getting what I want. Yes. Like you, you saying the right thing, doing the right thing, believing the right thing, you know? That's why I used to think relationship was, was... Um, performance. Performance. Yeah. Doing the right thing, saying the right, the right things. Thing. Yeah, in yeah. why? And I think underneath that there was fear. Yeah. Fear of loss, fear of losing you. And that, that, that went so deeply for me was... Mm. I want to keep you, I want to keep you with me because you give me love without you there's no love if I lose you I lose love and what has changed now for you well <laughs> well how long have we got um, <laughs> <laughs> so love um, well, as, as I was saying well what I came to realize was that love um, wasn't something that came and went you know, for me, love is just another name for who you are. Mm. Uh, as um, I mean, use the word consciousness actually, awareness, presence, being. It's it's this this um, ever present um, space. This 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 capacity that you are, the capacity right now in, in which these thoughts are appearing, these sensations, these feelings, these sounds. All all, all of this is is somehow being held just as a you know a mother holds her child you know so somehow this present experience is is i mean as i say in my book it's it's allowed this moment is allowed um it's almost as if who you are is like this um again this is a this is a metaphor who you are is don't take this metaphor literally, you know, there's, it's, I think we, we have to use metaphor. When talking about love, we, we have to use metaphors, really. Or poetry, but we don't <laughs> poetry. have poetry now, so <laughs> metaphors we use and metaphors. Poetry. <laughs> yeah. So, um, who you are is like this vast, this vast ocean, ever present, always here, always has been here. I mean, you, you ask anyone, I mean, everyone, everyone watching this, this interview, you know, you all have the sense right now of, of existing, you know, the sense of being here, the sense of being alive, you know, and, that, and that's always been with you. That's, you know, it's something we very rarely acknowledge because it's so simple. I mean, it's so ridiculously simple, the sense of existing, because it's not particularly interesting. I mean, to the mind, which is interested in, in definitions and seeking and getting something. Stories. And, stories. Dramas. Dramas. Past and future. Yes. So the sense of being right now, not particularly interesting, and it, it hasn't changed. I mean, it was there when you were a child, when you were five years old, two years old. Maybe, you know, one, I mean, we don't know when it began, but it's not a question of when it began. Because all, you've always known it. You've known it more intimately than you've known anything. Everything has come and gone, every thought, every sensation, every feeling. Your body has totally changed. I mean, look at the impermanence of it. You know, your body has totally changed. Your, your thoughts about yourself has com have completely changed. You know, all kinds of feelings, sensations have come and gone. And you have this basic sense of existing, be being. You know, so it, this sense of being seems to be ageless. It doesn't, it, being doesn't say I'm five years old, I'm 10 years old, I'm 50 years old, I'm 90 years old. It doesn't seem to be attached to a particular age or, or a particular um, location. Yes. And wherever you are in the world, whether you're in India or you're in, you know, you're in Australia, you're in Battersea, in London, you know, the, the sense of being. So it, being doesn't seem to have a location, doesn't seem to be, to be located. It, being doesn't say, I'm in London, 
No, I'm in Australia. Being, being is being. You know, it, it seems to come before the story of how old I am or where I am or what I've done or what I want. You know, it seems to be very, very primal. Um, and it's, it's always here. It doesn't, ch it doesn't age. It doesn't change. It doesn't decay. It's always been with you. It's like, it's like your most beloved, um, dearest, oldest friend. It, it has never abandoned you. It's been there in every single moment, throughout every single breath of your life. And, and yet, yet we miss it all together. Yeah, we miss it all the time. It's what, it's what we long for. I mean, you can think about it. It's, it's always present. It never leaves you. It never judges you. Yes. It, it's, it, it doesn't reject any aspect of your experience. So, you know, you look back at the times in your life when you've been experiencing intense fear, intense anger, intense pain, and everyone else in your life has run away from you. No one else wants to be with you. What has stayed? What has always stayed with you? That. 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 Yes, indeed. Uh, you can't say what it is. You can't define it. It's not a thing. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a specific experience. You can't say it's that feeling, but not that feeling. It's that thought, but that, not that. It's there. It's present throughout. You know, on your, on your deathbed, as you, as you take your final breath, it's, it's there with you. And you know it when it's left it, actually. Once the body dies, you really see the difference mm. between when life is in it. I mean, obviously, but there is something about life. There is something, mm. it's, it's that that we're talking about, that it's so obvious when it isn't. <laughs> it's, and it's so... Um, I think that's why we overlook it so so easily and so much because it's nothing in a sense. It's not. There's no drama to it. It, it can't. Um, the mind, the seeker, is not interested in this because it can't use it in any way. It can't use. It can't. This isn't going to add anything to me. You see, because it comes before me. It's not involved in the story of me. It. It allows the story of me, I want to make that very clear. The story of me is not its enemy. It has no enemy. It's never had an enemy. It's always been holding throughout your life. It's been every thought, every sensation, every feeling, all the feelings you weren't supposed to have, all the thoughts you weren't supposed to think. It was there throughout, holding. So it has that quality. And a quality. I mean, this is why it's impossible to it's talk about. It's more than a quality. It's what it is. It is. It is yeah, it's, it is the holding. Yes. It is the holding. So that, that's unconditional love. That's yes. intimacy. That's the most intimate thing. That's more intimate than anything you could ever possibly experience. It's, it's, it's there in the midst of, you know, your deepest, darkest moments. The, you know, you're in the midst of grief, in the midst of great pain or doubt, the most intense despair. It cannot, this is the thing, it cannot abandon you. It is, it is the, in a sense, the perfect partner. It's the true beloved. It's the, it's the beloved. Yeah. Will not abandon you. It, it's, it can't. It, it, it's not even capable of abandoning you. Yes. It's not that it chooses not to abandon you. It's not even capable of abandoning you it, because it is you. In the deep, in the deepest sense, it is what you are, and that's what we're seeking. That's what we're seeking. But what, and this is the the great paradox, you know, and it's, this has been said so many times, you know, by so many spiritual teachers, well, you know, you are what you seek, but, but really, <laughs> you know, we're not making this stuff up. Yeah, and, you know, with all the various spiritual teachers that I've listened to and books that I've read, etc., etc., there has always been some sort of confusion about the beloved, mm. because when you said the beloved, somehow I always conjured up something, you something. know, just like this consciousness is something external to me. You know, and it, it really, yeah. and it's still, you know, I have difficulties in, in uh, I am the beloved. Yeah. Not, not, but without the I, yeah. you know? It's like, oh, what really? I am, what I am really? is Really? It's like, oh, the mind cannot get that. It's like, no, the beloved has to be something yeah. else. Have to be, you because know. Because the mind can, it only deals in limitation. It has to see, it, there has to be an object for it to, otherwise it, 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 it can't, it, it's like death, you see. The yeah. beloved is death. To the mind, the beloved is death. So it can't objectify it. It, it, it. it wants the image of the beloved. Yes. I mean, what, what, they say, don't they, you know, to, to look upon God's face, you know, you would die instantly. I mean, this is really, this is really it, you know, the... the um... Yeah, say more about that. <laughs> well, in a sense, what we're talking about is death. Lo love and death are so, I mean, they're so deeply 
um, intertwined. Really, I think they're the same thing. You know, lo love is the the death of two, the death of separation. Yes. The de it's, it's really love is the death of the separate self. But not as some event that's going to happen one day. That, again, the, the mind is always time. So it's, okay, death is going to happen one day. Enlightenment, death, the death of the self will happen one day. It, it turns death into an event that's going to happen in time. Then it starts, good, great, because now I can seek that. And that's what I, I used to, I used to get, yes. I, I got so caught up in these Advaita teachings and they talked about, you know, one day the self will fall away. Mm. One day there'll be some shift one day they'll, you know, the ego will collapse. But there's nothing you can do about it, or, or, or there is something you can do about it. But I, I realize now that that was just, that, that was the seeking mechanism. It, it takes what you are and it throws it into time. What you are is that death. Like, it's already happened. It's not, it's not that it will happen, it's already, the crucifixion has already happened. You know, yes. it's done. That's what Jesus said, it's done. It's accomplished. And we're still trying to accomplish what's already been done. The, the unconditional love, that we're seeking or that we're waiting for, it's already here holding this present experience exactly as it is. It even holds the longing. That's how huge it is. That's how huge this unconditional love is. It's what you talk about in your book about whatever it is that you're experiencing, it has already been allowed. And I found that very, very, very powerful. Mm. Because to me, that is actually the love of acceptance. That's it's it. already been accepted. And it's taken me a long, long, long time to, uh, to recognize that, that there isn't something else outside of me that needs to accept or not accept. <laughs> it's, it's already it's here. Already done. It's al because it's happening. And it is because it's happening that has already been allowed, that has yeah. already been accepted. The happening is the acceptance. That's how close it is. Yes, that is how <clears throat> close it is. Intimate. That's how intimate it is. We, we, make ex we turn acceptance into a <clears throat> something that will happen or not happen. There was a, um, there was a lady in uh, America. I was in America recently. She said something so lovely to me. She, um, she had been a spiritual seeker for many years and she, had, she read my book and she said she, she realized something. Um, it, was, it was something to do with, <clears throat> similar with, as to what you've just said, that her whole life she'd been trying to accept, struggling to accept, not being able to accept, you know, what's wrong with me, why can't I accept, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not strong enough to accept, maybe I'm not enlightened, you know, there's something wrong with me. Basically yes. it was some version of there's something wrong with me or waiting for acceptance that maybe that there's some other entity, there's something else that will do the acceptance. Maybe it's grace, maybe, you know. Maybe it's grace. Maybe yes, it's grace. <laughs> wait for the guru to, wait for God, wait for life, wait, it's like waiting, waiting, waiting. And she said something, it was so simple what she said, it was so sweet though, and she said, Jeff, I, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. It was all, it was always me that I was waiting for. Yes. Not me as in the story of me, but me as in who I really am. I, it was always me. I, I always, I and mean, this, this, these were her words, it was like, I, I always, um, I forgot what she said now. I, 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 I was the one. I, I, was, I always had the power to accept. It, yes. it was always me. But she, the point is, she said, this is what she said, she said that she, she had doubted it. It wasn't so much that, um, she wasn't acceptance, and then she was acceptance. It was what she had always been that, but there had been so much doubt, 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 because that's what had been drummed into her since she was a kid, is that you're not good enough. You can't be the one. Or you're not lovable enough. You're not lovable. It's the, I think it's the same thing, yeah. actually. That's my big thing, you know. Yeah, you're I've not lost lovable it now, enough. Yes. <laughs> like, okay, let's finish with that one. But yeah, I recognise that Or you're, you're not vast enough or something. Yeah. You're so limited, so it's yeah. about limitation. Yeah. You're too small. You're too limited as, as a limited self. You're too limited to hold this. That's the basic um, misconception. You're too limited to hold this. And yet, when you really look throughout your whole life, you've been holding. Yes. Effortlessly, you've been holding everything. Every experience you've ever had, what you are, has been holding it, allowing it. And, that, and that's what we really seek is that, is that embrace, that constant embrace that, that we are. But we're, we're trying to manage our experiences, you see. What we really seek is that which allows experience, all yes. experience. What we're trying to do on the level of experience, we try to manage our experience to have the right experience, the correct experience, the happy experience, the enlightened experience, and get rid of, don't want, don't want the other half of life. So it's like we, we, we limit ourselves so much. I only want half of life. I want the good stuff. Yes. I want the bliss and the peace and the joy and the, and the warm, happy feelings. And I don't want 
the discomfort, the pain, the sadness. And yet, you know, life is all of it and relationship is all of it. So when we come back to relationship, yeah. it's, I used to think that, you know, if, if pain appeared in, in a relationship, that was, that meant the relationship was going wrong. Yes. This isn't the one. This isn't the one. Yeah. In the next yeah. relationship, I might the, find yeah. the other one. You know. you know, or if, if sadness appeared or if doubt appeared, or if any kind of you know un discomfort appeared in the relationship, I would immediately go into the story of it. It's like this: is, there's something wrong with the relationship. You know that the that these waves are not allowed in this ocean. Yes. That there's not enough. There's not this. This relationship is so limited. It can't hold pain. It can't hold sadness. It can't hold. It can't hold brutal honesty and and, and realness and connection. I, I used to think that relationship with it was this limited thing that I somehow had to work on and improve and I, I, I don't know. It's Although I would like to be also devil's advocate because you know if we look certainly if I look at my own experience you know the relationship has always been that you know it not allowing or not just as you described it so you know you tend to manage and try to fix the uh, the thing as opposed yeah. to actually going underneath and, and, and underneath. recognizing the other as the holding but most yeah. relationships don't recognize that that's why they're not conscious Mm. But so, how do we how 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 do we relate consciously? Can one relate consciously for both? Is that even possible? And I recognise that in asking the question, there is already the separation in for both. Mm. You know, I'm already cutting you off. It's like, okay, I can hold the space, but you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Or maybe I can do it for you as well, you know, yeah. but that's not possible. Mm. At least not in my experience, it's not been possible. Mm. And for me, it all comes down to you know, just real honesty about my own experience. I think that's where the whole thing begins and ends maybe is um, just radical honesty about my own experience. And I'm, and, um, I'm no longer trying to... Here's, here's the thing, when I'm seeking something from you, yes. if, whether you're your partner or a friend or anyone actually. Or your boss. Or boss actually. Or your mother or father or your own sons or daughters. Yeah. When I'm seeking something from you, yes. whether it's um, love, a approval, respect, I mean, waiting for you to complete me somehow, waiting for you to somehow take away some, take away some pain, take away some discomfort, um, inevitably I'm going to start to manipulate you. I don't. I don't think we're. I, I don't think we quite realise how much you know we manipulate others in in our search, in our seeking. Um, you know, when when I when I'm looking to you for completion, inevitably I'm going to start trying to change you or, or trying to keep you the way you are. You know, either trying to change the way you are or trying to keep you the way you are. I don't want you to change. Because that, that's a that's a threat to me, you know. I I don't want to lose you. So then, uh, inevitably, I start manipulating, and sometimes in big ways, sometimes in very subtle ways. I want you to um, think a certain way, feel a certain way. I in a way, I start to restrict your your freedom and my own freedom actually. Because I want, I want the security. I want, I want, I want the security. I want, I want to keep you with me. And if, and if, so I, I start to, as you said, I start to perform. I start to pretend. I, I begin to hide, in a sense, hide who I really am. You know, and I mean, this is very simplistic examples, but you know, I pretend to be strong when really I feel weak. Let's just use really simple examples. Or I pretend to know when really my, if I was honest about my own experience, I. I would find a lot of doubt, you know, but for some reason I feel that I need to maintain this image of myself, the strong one or the one who knows or the one who's right or the, um, the successful one, you know. So I start to pretend, I start to play this, this role, this hold up this image of myself and you're probably doing the same thing. So now you have two images in a relationship. And, but where's the actual present moment relating? So actually in the, in the book I, I talk about the difference between, this is, and this is the language I use, the difference between um, relationship and, and relating. Mm. And I shall give the example, I, I remember it was several years ago, I was sitting in a cafe with my, my, my then partner and 
um, I realized it's almost like there was, there was two things going on. There was, there was the story of our relationship. So there was the, the memory of all the things we've done together and our history and how we've, things we've done and the, and the places we've been and the, and, and, um, and then there were, and the story of what might happen in the future, where we plan to go, what, you know, the, the dream of us walking into the sunset to get, you know, the whole Hollywood myth and, um, so I realized that there was, there was the story of me and you, this story of boyfriend and girlfriend. It was the boyfriend and girlfriend story. But then there was this other thing happening, which I started to realize perhaps was far more important, primary, which was us together now, in this moment, in this moment. Because I really started to realize on a very profound level, I, well, we may not have tomorrow together. I, I, you know, I, I, we're not guaranteed that. I don't know. I mean, I would love that. That would be wonderful. But am I guaranteed that? I don't know. You know, so I, I, I had all these ideas and hopes and dreams and plans for us together in the future. But really, if I'm honest with myself, all I can know is now, us together in this moment. So. Often we, we talk about relationship. When we talk about relationship, we're talking about the story of our relationship, our past and our future, and we're arguing, we start to argue over what you did and what, what will happen or won't happen, or, and we want to try and hold on to our dreams. You know, we, we, we have this mutual dream, and, and we focus so much on the, the dream of our relationship, yes. the past and the, and the future, um, that we end up missing each other, actually. Literally. Literally, we, we miss each other. And I started to realize my whole life I, I had been lonely. Even though I had been in relationships, I had been so lonely. I, so I'd you're not so really suggesting, though, that you don't have the dream, that you don't have no, the hope. This is, no, 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 no. Okay, no, that's good because, you know, I'm thinking, gosh, you know, anybody watching this is like, oh, you know, how can I say to my partner, you know, well, we may not have tomorrow together. Yes, at some level, we may not, but mm. there is, you know, the hope that we will That's actually be together. Uh, so, but, but at the same time, what you're saying is that, you know, what's missing, what's, missing. what's missed, actually, yeah. is, is, is the, how we are being right now in this present very moment. Present moment relating, because relating is, it's, it's a live, it's a present moment yes. thing. It's a real, it's real time. It's real time. It's, it's not past time. or future. Yes. It, and to me, that's relationship. That's, that, that's, for me, that's, that's true relationship. It's present moment, meeting, relate, seeing each other. So, and that, what that might involve is letting go of the dream, you see, the dream that you're going to change even, the dream that, yes. the dream that, the dream of perfection, mm. you know, the, the dream that you were ever going to be this, all the dreams I had about you, you were supposed to be this, you were supposed to be that, you were supposed to complete me, you were supposed to, feel this way you were you know that was that was that was my dream and um the dream that you were going to be perfect you were going to be the perfect one and for me these days anyway relationship is it's very much like waking up actually it's 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 this constant letting go of the dream and meeting meeting the one in front of you here and now which yes which may involve letting go of um your dream of perfection and meeting this beautiful, messy, mm. imperfect human being in front of you, like getting to know the one that you're actually with, getting, getting to know the one who is actually in front of you, like losing your, your, your hope, your, your dream maybe. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with hopes and dreams, they can be beautiful, sure. of course, but so easily we can end up missing the one in front of us, expecting them to be, um, expecting them to be so much and, um, and then punishing them when, when they don't when live up not. to that dream. So, for instance, you mentioned uh, that in this example that you were with your former girlfriend. So at what point did you decide, or let's say, you know, because I'm trying to bring it back again to, you know, in a sense, perhaps my experience, you know, yeah. to what point do you actually say, no, this relationship doesn't work anymore? At what point do you say that? Because, you know, if we come from being consciousness mm. we could be in relationship with anybody mm -hmm. so now this this is a I mean this is a really interesting question this is um, I always again I always used to battle with this one you know if if I am love if I am yeah 
then couldn't I be with anyone? Why, why, don't I, why don't I just go around having sex with everybody that I meet? And, and some people do that. I mean, you know, you, some gurus, you know, you yes. hear about that sometimes. Yes, some spiritual gurus, that. they they teach that they are pure love and, and, and they have relationships with everybody. And, and I, I'm not here to judge anyone, you know? No. So this is the mystery. This is part of the mystery of life as well, is that um, on one level, you know, everything is an expression of, of unconditional love, in a sense. Uh, everything is, an, or you could say everything's an expression of consciousness. And, and every, every tree, every flower, every volcano, every uh, whale, Every uh, and every every human being, in that sense, it's all consciousness appearing. So in that sense, there's this basic love underlying everything, you know, and that, and that's there with um, with everyone that you meet. It's that, that that basic love. It does. It's not the mind's idea of love. Mm. You see, it's nothing to do with the mind's idea of love. It's 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 it, and it comes from you know recognizing on the deepest level that beyond our stories. I am what you are. That's that's yes. that's love, and that's there with everyone. Yes. So in that sense, there's that basic love there with everyone. It doesn't mean that you like everyone that you meet. It doesn't mean that you lose your discernment. I think that's where we can get a bit confused with this stuff. Okay, so I have to love everybody. Okay, so I have to love Adolf Hitler. Or which acceptance, means I have, you know. Acceptance. It's like, yeah, yeah. you know, I have to accept you. Well, or you I have see, to... That's the mind's idea of acceptance. That's the mind's right. idea of love. And that's what I always used to think, you know, was... Okay, back when I was, um, I had all these funny ideas about love. Okay, oh, I love everyone, so I, I love Adolf Hitler, you know, and, and and I think I got a bit confused because it's like, yes, on, on the deepest level, I, I can I can recognise that even someone as as evil as Adolf Hitler, you know, someone who might be considered to be one of the most evil people yes. who had ever lived, you know, he's still consciousness. It doesn't mean I condone what he. Did. Of course I don't. It doesn't mean that I approve. It doesn't mean that I like him. But on the deepest level, he is consciousness. Mother Teresa is consciousness. Adolf yes. Hitler is. It's all consciousness. Yes. But on the relative level, and this is why I think it's helpful to talk about levels, even though ultimately yes. there aren't levels. Yes. It's really helpful. On the relative level, of course I don't approve of what he did, and I would, I would, I, and I wouldn't necessarily enjoy his company. I wouldn't, you know. I, it's like sometimes I use the example of. Uh, it's like, I can't believe I just said I wouldn't enjoy Adolf Hitler's company <laughs> on an <the> interview. <laughs> That's a judgment. Well, we I, don't, I don't know, know actually. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know who would, but <laughs> I never, I never met the guy, so I can't comment. But it's, it's um, you know, it's certainly, not, it's certainly, not, I don't condone what he did. Anyway, it's not about Adolf Hitler. No, it's, it's, it's an example. Um, but I sometimes use the example of. Um, you know, you're walking through a um, museum or a um, art gallery, and uh, you know you're you find yourself naturally drawn to certain pictures, certain sculptures, and you don't even know why. You know, it's so on the deepest level. You you know, it's all consciousness. It's all love. You know, even the 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 pictures you aren't drawn to are an expression of that, and yet within your experience, you, you find yourself, for some reason, it's very mysterious, drawn to certain works of art, or, draw, you know, music. You're drawn yes. to certain pieces of music, and you're drawn away from others. You know, may, maybe for a while you're drawn towards a certain piece of music, and, and, then, and then you find yourself drawn towards another piece. I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's very it, mysterious. Yeah, it's, it's actually great uh, what you're just saying because I certainly resonate with art and I know exactly what it is that draws me to art. Mm. You, and I really do know. It's, it's, like, it's, it's not here. It's no. just here. You know, really, I, I couldn't even explain why mm. one piece versus another. So, you know, I think that's a great, you know, analogy. But I was talking about another thing, you know, it's like at what point, what point do you do? say no more of this. So you're yeah. attracted to this wonderful piece of art. Yeah. You know, at what point you say, I'm going to d dispose. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not, you don't dispose of an individual, but at what, you know, how and why and at what point? Or is that the mystery as well? That you stop liking the piece of well, art? Well, I mean, we could, we could do a whole other interview on this. This is, I mean, this is really a fascinating question. And I, I meet so many, again, I meet so many people who are, you know, they're, they're struggling with this and, and, you know, they're in a relationship but it's not working anymore and, you know, um, it's gotten to a point where it can't go on 
they feel they can't go on the way it is, but they don't want to. They love the person, but yes. they can't be with the person. And yes. what do, well, then, what does it mean to end a relationship? Yes. What does, I mean, this is really what I explore in the book: is what does it mean to end a relationship? Do, do we ever really ever, end a relationship? Exactly. Do you ever? Do you really ever, ever? Yeah. Ever? Do you really? I mean, I, I, I can speak from experience here. I, um, uh, I won't go into too much detail, but I, you know, a few years ago, I was, I was. Um, how I, w I was in a relationship, been you know, for a few a few years, uh, four years, I think, and we um, the relationship evolved. You know, in in, in the beginning, we were very we were, it was very intimate and very um, sexual, and and uh, and over the years, we kind of just became best friends. Really, I mean, it, nothing nothing ever went wrong. It was it was what interesting because we both get, we gave each other a lot of freedom. We were incredibly close, but we just allow, allowed each other to express and to change and and uh, it kind of evolved into we, we, we became um, best friends really. And that was it was such an interesting time for both of us really. And for, and for me, I just you know, I was really exploring these questions. What does it mean to, to be with her? What does it mean to I say she's my partner. What does that mean? You know, because without the without the story, you know that we're together or not together. You know, without the story, beyond the story, are we in a relationship? Are we not in a relationship? There is just this relating. We are. We are. We're just the way we are together. And, and so there, there was a while I was I was really playing with that. What What does it mean to say we're not together anymore? Because I felt close. We felt connected. I felt intimate. And yet, you know, it wasn't, um, we weren't a couple in the traditional sense anymore. And then at some point we, we decided to just say, look, just to tell the story that we're not together anymore. And it was interesting to watch, actually nothing changed in a way. Nothing really changed, the, the story of who we were changed. The, previously the, the story was that we were partners and we were going to have this future as partners. And then that story changed and then we were no longer partners and our future wouldn't be a partner story but it's funny because by that point in my life I wasn't really interested so much in the story anymore anyway and um, it was so interesting for me to just you know even after we, we we broke up to stay connected with her and to stay honest and to stay intimate and I mean we're still best we're still best friends and it's all it's on some level it's almost as if nothing change you know, even though we, we were together and now we're not together that story to me seems it's you know it's um in a way we're always together you know mm -hmm. underneath the story of whether we're partners or not partners we're married we're not married we're girlfriend boyfriend we're friend underneath there's something underneath that story that's happening p before the, st the story is beautiful you know yes and you know we we say we're together we say we're in a relationship we say we're not we're in a relationship but under, it's like underneath all of that, there is this unconditional love that doesn't say it's in a relationship or out of relationship. It doesn't confine itself in any way. It and you know? is that something that might feel threatened by the appearance of other partners? Or would other partners feel threatened by that particular kind of relationship or way of relating? That, you know, again, you know, bringing it down to the practicality of it. Practicality. To, or, 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 you know, to what well, I'm, people I'm lucky might in a way, recognize. I'm, 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 my girlfriend um, I have now, we've been together for a couple of years, she's incredibly um, understanding and she really, she really gets it that love is much bigger than, yes. much, much bigger than we're taught. It's, it's huge, you know, and it can, uh, it can contain all kinds of things, you know, but it, but it takes honesty. I mean, it took, mm. you know, when I first met my, my current partner, it took a lot of honesty and, and being open. I mean, I think that's what it, if that's anything that I've learned over the past, five, six years, especially, is, is it, it always comes down to honesty and the, with, with, with the one in front of you. Whether you call them a friend or you call them a partner or whether you you're no, long, no longer call them a partner, yes. it's, it's all relationship, you yes. know, it's, it's, we, we name the relationship, we, 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 we give it a label, we, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that, we, we, you know, it's not about getting rid of labels either, because I still, I call my girlfriend my girlfriend. You know, sure. and that, that's a wonderful play as well. It's, it's yes. a beautiful thing to hold that. Yes. To knowing on one level that she's not mine. You know, that the label girlfriend doesn't define her. That boyfriend doesn't define me. That 
that we don't necessarily have this whole future. You know, and it's, it's beautiful because it brings us back to the, the preciousness of being together now, you know, and, and um, but so, yeah, so I was saying this, the one thing I've learned is it's honesty, 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 and because that's relationship, that, that's relating, and the, the willingness to expose yourself as well. Yes. I that's think the that's, one thing I've learned yeah. is the willingness to drop, to drop the performance, to drop the, um, the image. Yes. You know. To drop the manipulation. To drop the manipulation. <clears throat> um, you know, to stop pretending, pretending, <coughs> sorry, pretending to be, I'm the one with the answers. You know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm the strong one. I'm the this. I, you know, it's to be willing to just expose yeah. what's actually here. If what's here is doubt, yeah. <clears throat> and first of all, as, as you said before, to, to acknowledge, to acknowledge the doubt, to admit it, and then maybe find ways of sharing it, yes. even if that's scary, you yeah. know, even if that, <clears throat> um, if for many years you've been pretending that you're the one who is, you're, I'm the, I always know, and then you start to reveal actually there's a lot of doubt here, yes. that can really shake up the status quo, yeah. but that's beautiful, I mean, yeah. the, if, um, I think that's what we fear is the loss of, um, Well, put it this way, if, if it can be lost, it wasn't really, <clears throat> it wasn't really it what you longed for. Yeah. So always to, to be willing, always willing to, to lose what you thought you had. Yeah. Al always being willing to, to lose the image, to, to lose the, well, the ego, really, yes. and, and yes. to expose yourself and to, to meet the one in front of you. Because yeah. you might have never met before, really, you know, we... Um, <clears throat> and then, th to me, that, that's the priority, is, is to meet. <clears throat> where where the story goes from here, I don't know. Yes. So the the priority is to meet the, the 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 honesty, the exposure, to expose my flaws, to expose my imperfection, to expose my doubt, to expose my pain, to expose it all. Because what's there to lose, right? Yeah. All that can be lost is the the dream. And this what what this reminds me of is what you mentioned earlier in the previous interview that what we're really afraid of is to live. <laughs> and you know, again, you know, living is actually Exposure. expressing and, expo and, and, and exposing yourself and being completely and utterly honest and in the moment and only in the moment. You can't be honest just yesterday. No. So it's anyway, that, that's. Uh, I'm also conscious of the fact that we're going to have to wrap up and. Um, oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's this thing called time, it's isn't there? It's called time, yes, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, anything that might be missing? <laughs> is there anything missing from this interview? <laughs> well, it's just to... Um, any piece of advice? Any, any little nugget you yeah. want, the, 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 no, the end of no, interview no, nugget? Um, well, I think it's what I was saying before, really, that it's very strange. It's what you said, what, what we long for really is to, is to, to be fully alive, to, yes. to live. Um, and in relationships, actually, what we long for is to just fully be ourselves, to, to end the, um, pardon my French, to, to end the bullshit. Yes. Just to, to expose what's here, to stop pretending, um, to risk. Yeah, love, to is, risk. love is a risk. Relationship is it's a risk. And if you're not risking, you, you've, you know, you're kind of, you're numb somehow. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a constant risk, the risk of losing what you thought you had. But it's, then it's, you see, it's not, it's not really a risk. The, for me, the real risk is to not be alive. Yeah. The real risk is to not really meet the one in front of you because yeah. you might not have tomorrow to meet. Yeah. You might not have tomorrow. And, that, and that's something that I keep on coming back to. That's something that yeah. I, I, I can't doubt that. Yeah. You can doubt a lot of other stuff, but you can't doubt that. That, you know, the preciousness of this moment together. Yeah. That's beautiful. And on that note, we definitely have to <laughs> stop, definitely. So again, Jeff, The Deepest Acceptance is a beautiful, beautiful book. And um, if you'd like to have a look at uh, also, you know, previous uh, interviews that we've done, is the conversation on non-duality. Anyway, thank you very much for con watching Conscious TV and thank you very much, Jeff, for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a full day. Thank yes. you. And we'll see you again soon. Okay. Goodbye.